is me, Chris Candido. No gimmicks needed. Do you have many interactions with Paul personally or, you know, I mean, I've got loads of questions about him, but, uh, I mean, you personally with Paul, did it, was he welcoming? Did you chat, chat, chat to him yeah. a lot? No, he was, he was very welcoming. I mean, I, you know, again, I was a kid at then, and he was just very, uh, very cool. You know, always seemed very, like, like focused on what he was doing, always running around talking to this guy, talking to this guy, somebody trying to find him. But he was always cool and cordial. And even later on when I was older, like, you know, hanging around WWE, he was, he's like, oh, dude, it's so great to see you here. So, you know, he was cool. I don't, I didn't like, I don't know him, you know, like to like call him up and hang out with him, but we were always cordial to each other and cool, you know? Yeah. You actually preempted one of my questions I was going to ask, but can you give me an example? Maybe not an impression because you'll hurt your throat, but um, could you give me an example of uh, one of Paul's rousing, uh, rallying speeches? One of Paul, Paul, Paul Heyman's? Yeah. He'd be like, he'd be like, guys, it's third and 10. This is the Super Bowl. You have the ball. It's your ball. You're going to take the ball and you're going to take it to that fucking end zone for the touchdown. And we're going to win, motherfucker. And people be like, yeah. And uh, I, that was, he, he said some variation of that one time. And it, like he would, he would get everybody. I just remember him saying, it's your ball. You want, you want to see this? You take the ball and you show them what you can do with it. Just run that ball. Ah. <laughs> so he, he, was, he was good at getting the guys amped up. <laughs> I always think like his voice always reminded me, at least when I was a kid, of uh, Gilbert Godfrey when he's doing Iago the parrot in Aladdin. He's got that same sort of, <laughs> rah, you know, sort of like how how yeah. does he speak like that all the time? I, I, yeah, I don't know, I don't know, but yeah, <laughs> dude, he was a movie. Him, I know him and Jim Cornette always butt heads, but I think it's both because both of them fucking love wrestling so much. You know what I mean? Mm. Like for all the shitty things Paul did one thing uh, you know did or not did or whatever he freaking loves the business you know and and so does so does Cornette so that's that's why you know I I I, was, I got respect for for Paul Heyman a lot and he's always been cool to me you know uh, there's at least one example in the book uh, no gimmicks needed uh, about Paul Heyman uh, doing a bit of a Tennessee switcheroo on the phone with Chris and and uh, it was that just the only time when he pretended to be Raul Oh yeah, I, he would do all kind. He would do weird shit, man. And everything was like a secret with him. Like you know, <laughs> this is only for you to hear. And like he was, he was, he was like a flim flammer kind of. I, I don't know how to explain it. Like you know, he yeah, he was he was always. It always seemed like he was stressed out and had like an ulterior motive and was like fucking like Doctor Evil. You know what I mean? Like he always had something going on. Like I need to talk to you and only you. Like you know, fucking. I uh, see. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, again, but I, I do remember that story. Yes. Did uh? Oh well, you, you're gonna have to tell the story then because uh, that will be a well, teaser I, for I, the book. I, I remember hearing it in the book. You probably know more than I do because Cosper's the. But I remember he called my brother. So was my what, what you tell? What was my brother at WWE at the time or no? No, no, no. It was uh, late 97, but, um, in the book, it was Tammy and Chris were going to Montreal for survivor series 97. And was something about to tape. Oh, 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 oh yeah. And he, he, he called up and said it, it was Raul. And yeah, you know, I don't remember the whole story, but now it's funny because my brother's Wikipedia page, they have his, uh, they have his middle name is, Christopher Raul Candido. And that's not his, <laughs> that's not his real middle name. So I had him change it. But yeah, I like I said, Cosper knows more of the the the, the wrestling history parts. As I know more of the backstage stuff. But I, yeah, I do. It's it's the book I personally read, but I I haven't read the finish. I, I like because I wrote it. How, what happened was I started writing a book around like 2010, and uh, I got like. You know, I don't know, let's say 50, 60 pages in. And it was just like a stream of consciousness, just writing stories and all this shit. And I started at the end because it was like, you know, so I started there, worked backwards. And then when Cosper got in touch with me, he's like, um, he's like, I want to do a book on your brother. I'm like, oh, I already started one. Let me see if I can find it. And I found it and I emailed it to him. And he's like, dude, this is really great shit. He's like, um, why don't, uh, he's like, why don't, if I, if I can use this, I'll make you co-author and then, you know, we'll go from there. So that's how that started. Right. And um, we had been, so I, I, you know, I sent that book over to him. He used that, but then also every day I have a new story. I'd be like, I'll oh, do this time. 
because me and my brother were together like 24 seven, especially the last, like, you know, two, three years of his life. So, you know, I'd, I'd pass a place and I'd be like, Oh man, this is the time that, you know, we stopped and shoveled this old lady's driveway when it was snowing out. This is the time, like, uh, you know, uh, and so I text him like a thousand times a day with different stories. Hmm. So it was hard to pick and choose which ones went into the book and which ones didn't. Well, uh, this one, I don't think went to the book. There was something about money, but did Paul ever owe uh, Chris and Tammy money at the end when they left? Yes, they did. And he did. And he also did something like, in the beginning, my brother wanted to take a hand in like like building ECW, you know? And they were like, you know, Paul was like, Chris, book all the boys' flights and hotel on your card and I'll give you the cash for it. And he did that in the beginning and he would get reimbursed. And then he was doing it and not getting reimbursed. And that's kind of what made him broke, you know? And there was no like contract or anything. It was like on a handshake, you know? So that's, I don't know the figure that he ended up owing him, but I know he was doing, he was doing that for, for a while. My brother was like, at one point he's like, I had, my credit was so freaking amazing because, you know, I, I, I booked the trips, you know, a couple, whatever thousand pay it back. And, you know, he's like, I could have bought a Lamborghini with a credit, my credit card. But then he stopped, uh, he stopped giving them, you know, he stopped paying them after a while. And then ECW went under. Yeah, with the uh, with the with the number fresh in my memory, I think it's one hundred and seventy thousand when American Express closed, uh, uh, cut Chris off. It could be something like that. I remember me and him. This isn't in the book, but I remember one day he's just like, dude, he's like, I, I have to have money somewhere. He's like, I made so much fucking money. He's like, how do I not have more right now? He's like, so we had this one um, like these steel Halliburton bags. And he's like. He's like, it's full of papers. He's like, let's go and, and look and see if I have any accounts anywhere. I'm like, okay. So me and him went to Paul's Tavern, this, this bar. We opened up his his uh, his bag and we're all we're looking through like bank papers and shit. I remember he, he was just like, dude, look at this. He, he's like, at one point, he's like, I had $560,000 in my checking account. Like he was just like showing me receipts. We we're trying to find like, we were like calling banks. He's like, you know, sometimes he was fucked up. He's like, what if I was all gimmicked up and I just opened an account somewhere? that's a distinct possibility so we were like looking through different you know it's not like we had online back banking back then you could find out so we were just trying to see turned out he didn't he thought he did you know but that's yeah. that's right before he fucking cleaned his act up and got everything together 